Hey everyone, this is Disc Junkie and welcome back to Disc Junkie's Jeep. It's a beautiful fucking summer day. I'm sitting here with the Jeep Wrangler grill and you might be wondering why are we going to be focusing on the grill? Didn't we already do this? I mean we got the angry wild boar grill, skull headlight covers. What else do you need? Well take a look at this! Dun dun dun! It's a fucking bumblebee! I mean this thing cannot stand. Uh, I'm sorry, the, he, he's already dead. I'm not talking animal cruelty, uh, just... Oh, oh god, okay. So clearly we're gonna have to be doing something to just stop fucking debris and dirt and bumblebees to end their life inside this lovely vehicle here. So what we're gonna do today is putting some sort of an insert into the slots on the front. So yeah, let's just look at the stuff that I picked up. So first of all, we got a bag of zip ties. You can basically find them at any hardware store. The other stuff I got is something which I want to mention because this is stuff that I found online on eBay and I figured that, you know, you got to be able to purchase these in Sweden, but I couldn't figure out what the hell to search for. I didn't realize what these were called. And these are zip tie mounts, but in Sweden they are called Buntbandsfesten. Now this is a pretty logical translation. But I, for the love of God, couldn't figure out how to search for these. But yes, it's Buntbandsfesten. You can find these. I think these particular ones come from a Swedish store called Jula. But you can probably get them at Klaus Olsson or Shell Company or whatever. So I got two bags of those. And they are essentially little squares with little holes in them and adhesive on the back. And you are supposed to thread zip ties through them. And then they work like a mount. Yeah, you get the idea. Next up is something which is essentially a sheet of metal, or a sheet of aluminum I should say, to avoid these sort of rust issues. And then it's been perforated with these little holes in them, that you can see. So I got these at a Swedish store as well, which is called Bauhaus. And if you want to Google them, I suppose you will Google for either Hålplåt or Hålskiva. But I haven't found too many places that sell these uh, at a good price. And I'm not saying that Bauhaus was the best price either. They were essentially 189 Swedish crowns per piece. These pieces are 25 by 50, I believe, in terms of these centimeters. Now they did sell bigger ones, which were one meter, which would be better, because then I could have one piece for the entire grill. But uh, those were also, they were only 20 centimeters high, which would mean too small to cover the slots. So yeah, we are essentially going to be putting these inside the vehicle, visible through the slots. Hopefully we'll keep some of the debris and dirt and little creatures outside the car as opposed to being inside the car. And they will also give a bit of a visual update which I think we will enjoy. So, first thing we gotta do, open up the hood as usual, which you've all seen for like, I don't know how many times you've seen this. Just open it up, secure the hood, you gotta think safety first. And then essentially the only thing you gotta do, remove these little plastic tabs, two, three, four, five, and six. And now once all of these are gone, uh, it's actually really easy to just, you'll, you'll notice that this comes loose right away, like so. Uh, there are essentially these clips at the base. You can see one of them just uh, right through the slot here. I'm not really sure if it'll focus, but yeah, there it is. So essentially all you need to do is just sort of tug firmly at the base like this. And yeah, it should come loose just like that. It's just a fairly simple construct. Once the bottom of the grill is loose, you might be thinking that the entire grill is loose, but one of the things you need to do before pulling this away is that you got your uh, blinker turn signal stuff here. You just take this and you twist it like so, and then the bulb comes loose. So same thing on both sides. Once you've done that, you can just lifts the grill away like so and this will also give us a chance to see the jeep without the grill oh honey jesus well this is definitely an interesting look um yes you could actually drive around with it like this but it's not strictly recommended but yeah uh back to the grill so let me just grab these and sort of see what it looks like this would actually be resting on these little bottom uh, pillars or plastic thingies here, which I thought would be good because that way I will know that it is essentially straight. If it's just resting on here, I'll have to cut this or do something. But I thought then that way they get support both beneath as well as the openings there. I think it will be fairly easy to secure them. So first we are just going to be putting in some zip tie mounts. Hopefully they will fit. They actually look pretty big. Let's just open this up here. See what we got. Well, what do you know? As usual, when I try to do something at random, 
the size is fucking perfect. Wow. But basically what you do, just strip the backing on these so then you got some adhesive on there. And uh, I actually think a good thing would be to actually clean this first because there's quite a bit of dirt there. So I'm just going to wipe this down and then I'm going to put the zip ties on and see what we can do. Alright, we got our mounts done. You can obviously do this in any which way, but uh, this is the way I decided to position them. Ugh, bloody alarm. Fuck it. They're feeling pretty reliable. I've seen some videos where people do this kind of stuff and they put like super glue on the back. Obviously they could come loose over time. But then again, so what? Then I'll just, I'll just remove it and reinforce them or something. I mean, even if they do come loose, there's no real place for the metal piece to go. There's no way that it can actually make its way out of there, so to speak. So it's not a hazard in any sense. But anyway, uh, now we are going to just take our aluminum pieces there. Just cut those up so we get them into the proper sizes. Stepping into the garage, I just put some markings down by putting some zip ties in. So I know sort of which line I'm going for using one of these metal saws. But as you can see, it's a really quite simple going through this. So we've now cut off our axis metal sheet. Let's just lay this down. Got a bit of an overlap, but not too much in between one of the openings. So uh, now I'm just going to try to uh, zip tie this down. But before that, you notice that this side has a bunch of color on it because there's actually a thin piece of protective uh, plastic sheeting on there. So I'm just going to strip this off. And uh, then I'm gonna try to mount this. Yeah, there we go. Bit of a, you know, tricks of the trade, tips to the people out there who want to do this. Try to get as long zip ties as you can. The only reason why these are quite short is because the holes are really small. The smaller the zip tie, they tend to be shorter as well. But I think they are just about long enough to work. And I'm probably overdoing this. It's gonna be like the gates of hell! But that's just the way I want to do it. Yeah, I'm the, this is pretty tedious, so uh, it takes much longer than I thought to thread these through. That's because uh, they are shorter and then you have less wiggle room, which uh, sort of helps with the overall, or doesn't help. Ah, <laughs> oh, God, it's too warm today. Last one is in place. It's time for the inevitable flip. Wow. Well, you look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. So uh, I'm just gonna reverse what we did earlier and actually get this back into place. You know what reverse looks like, right? Putting the latches back like so. And there we go. That is awesome. I mean, there's no flexibility here. It's really stuck on there really well. Yes, that's it. Thank you very much for watching and as usual, hope to see you all next time.